Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds of poker vlogger hands and bring you 10 of the best. Let me start by saying how appreciative we are of the incredible support we've seen over the last few months. And if you're watching this video without pressing the subscribe button, do us a favor, press the button, show us the love. We're on our way to 500 subscribers, which is a very exciting moment for us. So uh, if you haven't already, just click the button. All right, enough begging. What have we got in this week's video? Well, we've got some semi bluffs. We've got some full on bluffs and we've got chivalry in poker. Mm hmm. So sit back, relax and let's make a start. And number 10 this week, and Rampage Poker, your boy Ethan. He's playing in a $3,000 tournament at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas. And in this hand, it is always a nightmare when you see this at Showdown. In the same level, I pick up Queen-9 offsuit in the cutoff. I raise it up to 26,000 and only the big blind defense, and he also has a similar size stack. So two of the bigger stacks on the table battling. Let's see a flop of King-10-5 rainbow. He checks it over to me, and on these boards with two Broadway cards, I'm going to bet small and expect to take it down a lot of the time. I bet out 15,000, and he doesn't fold, but he ends up making the call. So I have a gutter. Let's just spike it, right? The turn, Jack of Clubs. Thank you, dealer. That's what I asked for, and he delivered. Brings in a backdoor flush draw, but shouldn't be too relevant. He checks it over to me again, and I'm going to size up for sure. This board should hit me a lot more than my opponent, and sitting with basically the nuts, second nuts behind ace-queen, I decide to bet out 80,000, about 80% 80 of the pot. Sizing up here, and he thinks about his decision for a while. Before ending up on a call. Big pot brewing here. We just have to fade a brick or I don't even know. I don't even know what I have to fade. I feel like I've just got the winner here regardless of what happens. The river is the king of clubs though. So that's a little dicey. Board is paired. The flush draw gets there and he starts with a check. Interesting spots. And I think I'm just going to have to blast off here. Got a bet for value. And I have the nine of clubs, which reduces some flush combinations. So I go for it, hoping he has a king for trips and won't be able to fold them. I bet out 200,000 and he doesn't take too long before making the call. I show my hand. Let's scoop this massive pot. He shows ace queen off suit. What? Oh my God. He has Broadway. The turn Jack was an absolute disaster. I lose way too many of my chips. I'm down to under 200,000 in my stack now, and that's brutal. Pretty brutal beat. Basically, a second nuts running into the nuts, and uh, I don't know. Feels like a spot where he should never have ace-queen, given the dynamics and given the position I raised from, but uh, that's painful. I'm short stack now and got to run it up somehow. And nine this week, and Lexo is playing in a big 10, 20, 40 dollar cash game at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. And there's a really nice value out of a disguised hand in this one. Still playing four-handed, it's past 4 a.m. We have five, three of hearts. Same player from last hand raises in the small blind to 160. I make the call and we get a great board of three, six, nine, two hearts. We flop bottom pair and a five high flush draw. A big board for us. He bets 120 and this time I just make the call. Turn four of diamonds doesn't give us a better hand right away but it does improve us to more equity. Now we have a pair, an open-ended straight draw, and a flush draw, and the small blind now continues for $400. Given the fact that I do have showdown value, and I only have a five high flush draw, I could be up against a better flush draw, a two pair, a set, or even a straight. With that being said, I don't think a raise is the best play here. I think a call in position is fine, which is what I do. We're going here to the river. We have so many outs and we hit one of them. The river's the deuce of spades, now giving us a straight. Any five will make a straight and five seven is the nuts. I'm expecting my opponent to check on this river card because this board has run out pretty scary, but he doesn't check. He decides to over bet the pot he throws out $2,000, and now the action's back over on us. 
We have two options here facing a $2,000 overbet on this river card. With a straight, we can either call or we can jam all in. I have about $6,000 left, which means if I jam all in, it'll be $4,000 more for him to call. And versus this overbet sizing on a one liner to a straight, we could be losing a 5-7 suited as well. I think call is just the best option. I look back at my cards. I've been playing all night. I want to make sure I still have it. I've got a five in my hand. There's a two and a three and a four and a five and a six. Yep, I have a straight, so I just decided to make the call. And he shows ace seven of diamonds for ace high with the seven blocker. And we end up taking down over a $5,000 pot here with five three of hearts. The table ends up breaking and we end up calling it a night. Number eight this week and Alex Duval is playing in a 2-5 cash game at the Red Rock Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. And he squeezes this one through for a very nice semi-bluff. This next hand is pretty sick, so strap in. We have five three of spades and raised to $15 in the low jack. Now look, I know this is a little bit out of line, but I only have about two hours to play in this session, so I'm getting out of line. The small blind ends up three betting us to $60. Now I didn't open this hand to fold to a three bet. I make the call. The flop comes 10, six, deuce, one spade. We flop a gut shot and backdoor spade draw. My opponent continues and bets half pot, $60. I consider a raise here with the possibility of a lot of good turn cards, but I decide I want to stay balanced as if I had a set, I definitely would not raise here. I just make the call and the turn comes three of diamonds. This time with about 240 in the pot, my opponent bets 160. Now at this point, I think all three options of call, fold, or raise are on the table. Being that this opponent has been tight and I've seen him make big folds already in this session, I think I can get a bluff through here. If I raise here and then jam the river, they are certainly the type that could fold and overpair. With this in mind, I put in a raise for 390. This is less than a 2.5x raise and is designed to look pretty strong. If my opponent makes a call here, they will have about $700 left and I would be jamming for that amount into about 1k. With that in mind, I probably should have gone a bit smaller than 390, but it's fine. My opponent does end up making the call and the river comes a 10 of spades. They check and this is a very bad card. We are no longer likely to have one of our biggest possible value hands, that is pocket 10s. And I think the chances that my opponent will fold and overpair here now go down significantly. With this in mind, I also have to consider if my three could ever be good here. And I think it sometimes could. My opponent can have some semi bluffs himself, like eight, seven suited or diamonds. I decide to give up and check back and we hear this. Uh, you face on, I have a three. Wow, we play poker now. That's right, we are playing poker now as I show a three and am good. My opponent had ace high. My best guess is they had ace x of diamonds. This was a fun hand. Number seven this week and Mariano is playing in a 25-50 cash game at the Park West Bike Casino over there in Bell Gardens, California. And what do we do if we're Mariano in this hand? Are we calling with pocket nines? Let us know in the comments. A few rounds later, this hand comes up where I open nines in late position and get re-raised by the big blind to 1300. I call in position and we get a flop of 10 four deuce with two hearts. He checks and I check it back. The turn is the five of spades. He checks again and for a second time I choose to check, thinking that we're either beating ace high or getting trapped by a bigger pair. The river is another four and for a third time, my opponent checks. Now, I think it's likely he's got ace high, so I elect to bet small, hoping to get hero called. But, after a few moments, my opponent decides to check raise all in for slightly over $4,000. I know the graphic says a different amount, but it's wrong this time. Anyway, this seems really strange to me. On one hand, why would he check three times with something strong when I could easily check it back? But on the other hand, this seems like a ridiculous spot for him to attempt a bluff, especially against someone who doesn't fold too often, and he knows that. So, yeah, I felt like it was a really close one, but after a while, I end up making the incorrect play and folding. Right on cue, my opponent shows 7-deuce offsuit. 
A very cool bluff by him. Nice hand. Number six this week, and we're sticking with Lexo. He's playing in that 10, 20, 40 cash game at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. And there's some really nice analysis on how to bluff with a small pair in this one. Pocket three is now playing four handed at the must move game. The small blind makes it 160. I make the call heads up to queen five deuce rainbow. He continues for $120, which I feel like he's going to do with 100% of his range. I think pocket threes are going to be good on this board a ton of the time. So instead of calling and not really knowing where I'm at, I decide to put in a raise. I make it $320. My point in raising here is to try to get him to fold out hands that he would raise preflop and then C bet on this board. Hands like Jack-9 suited, maybe Ace-8 suited, King-9 suited, Jack-10 suited, all hands with some backdoor equity that he continued to barrel on. So I make it $320 and he ends up making the call, which means he probably has something on the board, possibly a five, maybe a deuce or a queen or an under pair to the queen as well, like pocket eights or sevens. When the turn card is a six, it now gives us a gut shot. Any four will give us a straight. When he checks over to me, I'm going to continue to bet here. I make it $700. There's two hearts now on the board, so he could have possibly called on the flop with a backdoor flush draw, which he now picked up. I'm pretty sure I'm bluffing in this spot. Now, of course, I still could get called by worse hands like ace four or ace three for a gut shot, possibly a hand like ace deuce as well. But I think against the $700 bet, he's going to be folding those hands. So when he makes the call, I'm pretty sure we're behind here. He most likely has a queen, a five, or an under pair to the board, possibly a flush draw as well. A massive pot here going to the king of clubs on the river. Now I'm regretting my raise in the flop. Am I really just going to punt off a couple thousand dollars with pocket threes? He decides to check over to me. I'm not sure what I should do. Should I give up? and check back or should I fire again? I've said this in previous vlogs, if I bluff, I want my hand to make sense. If I bet this river card when the king comes, I'm representing hands like two pairs, sets and straights. I have two threes in my hand, which is a great hand to have. I block him from having the nuts with three four suited. I can definitely have that hand raising as a semi bluff on the flop and then getting there on the turn. If I had two pair or a set on the flop, I would be raising and I'll be betting big on the turn as well. So I decide to fire out here for $1,000. A smaller bet according to the size of the pot. I don't want to bet too big because this is exactly the same sizing I would go if I did have those strong hands, like two pairs, sets, and straights. I'd want him to try to call with all of his queen x holdings. I want this bet to look like I want to call. Now, of course, the player I'm playing against is a very good player. I actually don't think he's going to be folding a queen X hand here that often, but I'm not really targeting those hands. I'm targeting hands like ace five, pocket eights, pocket nines, or sevens. I got a little sticky on the flop and then called again on the turn. It's possible he has a hand like six, seven as well. All those hands should fold to this $1,000 bet. My heart is racing now. He goes into the tank for a while, over a minute and a half of thinking. I feel like this could be a massive punt if we are called, but luckily for us, he decides to fold and our pocket threes take this one down. Winning with pocket aces is fun, but I would say pulling off a big bluff on the river and having your opponent fold is one of the best feelings in poker. You're just sitting there trying not to give anything away and your opponent's tanking for what seems like forever and they eventually fold and you get the chips pushed in your direction, which is a great feeling. We're up over $2,000 now. Number five, and Branson is playing in a 5-5 cash game at the Gardens Casino in Hawaiian Gardens, California. And there's a very well thought out call on the river in this one. I get ace queen of spades on the button, the hijack opens to $20, and I three bet to $60. Standard stuff so far, the hijack calls, and we're heads up to a flop of 9-5 deuce with two diamonds. The hijack checks, this board doesn't hit my three betting range, and I have decent showdown value, so I just check. The turn is a three, and the hijack bets $75. Now, the standard move here is probably to just fold, but I do have a gut shot and two overs, and I'm ahead of draws, so I make the call. The river is another three. The hijack thinks, 
then bets $155. So here's my thinking. This river bet is only 50% of the pot. It seems pretty valuey. If he had a straight or a boat, I imagine he'd probably pick a bigger sizing and polarize this bet more. So what exactly is he representing here? A nine, pocket tens, a mid pocket pair. And what is he hoping I call with that he beats? As the three better preflop, I'm going to have a lot of over pairs that'll call and beat any pair he has. Or I'm going to have two big cards that miss the board completely and just fold. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm overthinking it, but the only hand that somewhat makes sense to me is pocket tens. I hope he's bluffing. I take a deep breath and toss in the calling chips. He says, good call, and flips over king six of clubs for a bluff. I was right this time, and I'm not going to lie. It felt pretty amazing showing ace high and taking it down. Number four this week, and Lexo is playing in a 2-5 cash game at the win in Las Vegas. And surely not, surely not another bad beat on the river here. There's a straddle and a limp. I raised to 40 with King Jack. My opponent makes the call. Heads up. We flop trips on King King 5. Now he checks over to me. I bet $35 and he makes the call. Turn card 10 of hearts. After he limp calls preflop and then just check calls my bet on the flop. I think he's going to have a lot of pocket pairs like deuces through pocket nines. So I don't want to bet too big on this turn card. I want to keep him in there with all of his pocket pairs. Maybe ace high hands weaker kings i bet 50 bucks and he makes a pretty quick call again going here to the river which is a three seems like a total brick to me i'm looking to size up on this river until my opponent leads into me for a 115 dollar bet before i go over my thought process and what i decided to do i want you guys to think what you would do in this situation let's say you're facing a 115 dollar lead on the river with trip kings with a jack kicker and your opponent has $500 behind, would you call or would you raise, would you fold or would you go all in? I'm kind of interested what you guys would do here. So pause the video, think about what you would do, put it down in the comments below. Now that you're back, I'll let you guys know what was going through my head. So if I raise on this river, I have to be able to get called by a worse hand. And this particular player had been playing pretty snug preflop. He only bought in for $500. So we can assume this game is probably pretty big for him. So I don't think he's really limp calling with weaker kings like king six, king seven, or king eight, or king nine. I think a lot of the time he's going to have king 10 plus that he limp calls preflop with. He could have pocket fives. It's possible he could have king 10 or pocket 10s and maybe even pocket 3s. So against this player who seems to be playing pretty tight, not really getting out of line, I don't think this lead is ever a bluff. I decide to just call, and it's a good thing we do. He shows us pocket 3s for a 2-outer full house on the river. And just like that, we are getting crushed so far. Super unlucky in the first half an hour of our session. Number three, and Rampage Poker, your boy Ethan, we're back with him in that $3,000 buy-in at the World Series in Vegas. And what on earth is happening on the river here? I mean, in a 1-2 cash game, maybe. But this is a $3,000 World Series of Poker tournament. $3,000! Enjoy this one. In the next spot, we're in level five now, and I pick up King-10 offsuit in the big blind. There's a low jack raised to 1,200. The cutoff makes the call, and I decide to call as well with a playable hand. Let's see a flop out of position, which comes 654, two diamonds and a heart. And on these low board textures, definitely a good board that I could lead out a lot. But multi-way, I decided to just check, and action checks around. When the turn comes in eight, now giving any seven a straight, I think it's a great time to start bluffing on this board. I'll have more seven X and more two pair combos compared to the other two players in this hand. I decided to throw out an over bet to 6,500. This gets the low jack player to think about it for a while. And he ends up actually making the call 
Then the cutoff goes into the tank as well. The cutoff asks how much I have in my stack. It's about 20,000 and he ends up actually folding, which is nice. At least now I'm going heads up to river. There's a more likely chance that I'll get my bluff through. So hoping to just blast this low jack player off of his hand. We're off to a river, which comes a king, huh? Now ending up with top pair. It's pretty interesting because obviously a pair's decent and not really what I had in mind. I still feel like I have to bluff here, hoping to win and fold out some stronger two pair combos. So hoping he can believe me, I rip it all in for 22,000 total. And uh, the opponent has about the same size stack. So for his tournament life, this player goes deep into the tank and uh, there's a lot of thinking involved in these massive pots early on in this tournament. And it's clear that he doesn't have a seven when he's thinking for so long as it clearly would have snap called. And while he's thinking more, I'm screaming in my head to please fold. I've been playing this tournament for literally 10 minutes and I'm bluffing off my stock already. Who would have thought? Anyways, I don't want to rebuy this quick, but he does end up calling and sticking it in, which sucks. I show top pair, just a pair of kings. I'm already out of my seat before he shows ace five of clubs. What? He just called down with fourth pair and I win? Dealer confirms that and I get all the chips pushed my way. I get a full double up and what a gift. Tried to catch a punt and I ended up getting it instead. Don't know what the right phrase is for that, but I'll take all the chips and now find a quick double up early on in this tournament is pretty incredible. Number two this week, and Alex Duval is playing in that 2-5 cash game at the Red Rock in Vegas. And, yep, we had to double take on the turn in this one, too. In the very first hand of the night, I have ace four of hearts and raised to $15 under the gun. The under the gun one player makes a call, and the under the gun two player three bets to $65. The button actually cold calls. When action folds back around to me, we are getting such a good price. Let's try to hit a flush. I make the call, and the end of the gun one player makes the call as well. We flop middle pair with the nut flush draw as well as a straight flush draw. Action ends up checking around to the button who cold called the 3 bet pre and he bets $110 into about 260. I just make the call and the rest of the players fold. The turn is the best possible card for our hand, the 3 of hearts. We now have a straight flush. To be honest, at the time I thought I just had a normal flush. Nonetheless, I think this is a card that my opponent will definitely check back, so I think a lead is in order here. I bet about half pot, $215 into 480. My opponent makes a call and the river comes the deuce of clubs. This really isn't a great card because I am way more likely to have sets here versus my opponent. They are more likely to have over pairs like pocket tens plus. With that said, we have about $600 left behind and we are going to try to get paid the maximum. We go all in for what ends up being about 578. My opponent thinks it over and and eventually calls. As you heard, we not only win an over $2,000 pot, but also a $100 high hand bonus. What a sick, sick hand to start the session. And number one this week, playing in a 510 cash game at the Hollywood Park Casino in Inglewood, California, is close to broke. Our friend, your friend, Kieran Rayner. And let me ask you this. Is there any chivalry left in poker? In this following hand, middle position makes it 60, button calls. I'm in the big blind. I have eight, five of spades. I go ahead and make the call as well. We're going off to a flop that comes 10, six, nine with two diamonds and a spade. Okay. We flop ourselves a gut shot here as well as a backdoor flush draw, but it's kind of fun to be leading at these boards sometimes. Like, it's not great, but... It's important to sometimes have some donk leads and on a board like this, it's going to favor my range and the buttons range the most and it's going to be a little tougher for the middle position player. Sure, he can still have the 10s and the 9s here very credibly, but beyond that, he's going to have a lot of ace x, a lot of king x, a lot of broadway holdings that don't connect with his board. Anyways, he makes a call after I lead for 125 and so does the button. We're going off to a turn card that comes a 5 of diamonds. All right? I decide to bid out here for $400. Again, I could be dink donk leading flushes. I could be donk leading a bunch of junk, but that also brings in a straight that I happen to block. The 7-8 straight comes in, 
And uh, yeah, I bet $400 because it seems like a decent idea. The initial razor folds, and this time the button tanks for quite some time before making the call. All right? Maybe he's really good at Hollywood Hollywooding, but for the most part, players wear most of their emotion on their sleeve. Unlikely for my opponent to have a diamond draw here. Maybe he's holding one diamond. He did the peel back where he looked back at his cards, so unlikely that he has two diamonds. Maybe he has one. Hoping to break a diamond on the river, and that it comes the deuce of clubs. All right. My opponent has about 1,300 effective left in his stack, and if we're going to bet for Gusto, we got to go for it. I end up going all in for $1,300. My opponent tanks for an eternity. This is obviously a big decision for him. I've never seen him in the 510 streets. I've never seen him at other casinos as some of these other players I have. And after quite a bit of tanking, my opponent makes the call. That sucks. We immediately flip over our 8-5 for our bottom pair pretty much here and our miss straight draw. He mucks his hand. I don't think he called me with the worst hand, but my hand is in clear view and he mucked his hand. About five seconds to 10 seconds after the dealer closes his hand into the muck, he realizes that he threw away the winner. This is a big, big problem now. And a lot of people in this, the comment section are going to say this, Kieran, you're too nice. Or some people are going to be like, oh, that guy should have protected his hand or whatever. But I've been there. That freaking sucks. Technically, I went all in. He called my bet. I showed my hand and he folded. So the chips that are sitting in front of him are technically my chips. Even though I had the worst hand, he folded the hand. This is where the problem comes up of like, you know, maybe I'm an idiot. Maybe I'm like a freaking goober. But like I've been there and I believe in karma and all that junk. And maybe if it doesn't come back to help me anytime soon, maybe in the future it helps out a friend of mine. But like... I tell him right away, and you can hear from the audio, that, all right, I'm going to take the main pot because you folded your hand, but I won't take what's in front of you, like your chips. So he called with the $100 chip, and I told him to take that back, and he kept his entire stack, which was like 13 to 1,500 chips. He's obviously, like, confused and blown away, but, you know, there's another gentleman at the table that immediately says, oh, you know, that was really good on you, man. You got lucky. Like, anybody else just, like, takes your money, but I don't know, man. I really don't know. Like... I don't know what to say. I don't know how to feel. I'm interested to know what you guys would do there. Uh, maybe I'm a pushover. Maybe it's probably minus EV for me. Like, I don't think anyone's ever doing that to me. I think if I call and I fold my hand, it does not matter. I think I'm never getting that money back. But that's just not how I play. It's not how I cruise through my life as a human. I think that's just all crap. So, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below what the hell you would do. I'm eager to see this comment section, to be quite honest. And uh, share this with a friend. Maybe somebody that's more seasoned in these games would know what to do. Do you chop the pot? Do you give them the pot? I, I don't know. I really don't know. Well, that's it, folks. The most unusual hand that we could find looking back over the week's videos. And... I don't know. I think we can give close to broke Kieran a round of applause for the way he dealt with that one there. I'm not sure there is very much chivalry in poker. I'm not sure there ever was. But in this situation, we give close to broke a round of applause. Nicely done, sir. Nicely done. Let us know in the comments. What would you have done? Would you have shown the same chivalry in this hand? Or would you have just taken the money? Because, hey, that's poker. All right, everyone, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. Give us a like, hit the subscribe button, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week on 10 of the Best. Until then, good luck of the felt.